events take place in the early years of the 16th century. The two sisters, Anne and Mary, and their brother George are having carefree fun. Meanwhile, Sir Thomas Boleyn informs his wife Elizabeth that he has arranged Mary's engagement to William Carey. Smart Anne in the father's opinion could find a far more advantageous suitor. Many years later, Beauty Mary is being prepared for the wedding, which will take place today. Her brother and sister came to support her. Mary is younger than Anne and is getting married earlier, but the sister is still very happy for her. Meanwhile, the Queen of England, Catherine of Aragon, has lost her newborn son in childbirth. The country risks being left without an heir, for the king and queen have only one daughter. The sad new was reported to King Henry Tudor. He was inconsolable, and the Duke of Norfolk noticed it. At the wedding, the guests are having fun. Despite the fact that William Carey is not noble and rich enough, Mary is happy to be his wife. And notices that Henry Percy, heir to the richest landowner in England, does not take his eyes off her. George reminds her that Henry Percy is engaged, but this does not seem an obstacle to Anne. The Duke of Norfolk, Elizabeth's brother, pays a visit to talk to Thomas about the king, who after another failed pregnancy of his wife, will soon begin to seek solace in the arms of a mistress. The Duke of Norfolk believes that they should certainly take advantage of this. Thomas suggests Anne's candidacy. After the celebration, Anne helps the sister prepare for her first wedding night. Mary promised to tell all the details in the morning, and then she went into the chambers, where she and her husband fulfilled their marital duty. In the morning the father and uncle sent for Anne and told her that she could bring their family untold riches and high position in society. The king's family life is not going well, and in such a situation his majesty will seek solace with another woman. If Anne pleases Henry, then their family will gain the king's favor. Later, Thomas informed the wife of his plan. Henry will visit their home in a couple of months. Elizabeth does not like this idea. It would take a fortune to prepare their home for the royal visit. In addition, Anne's reputation would be ruined. However, Thomas does not share his wife's skepticism. The next day Mary shared with her sister the intimate details of the last night. And too told the secret. Now she was to entertain the King of England himself. A couple of months later, Henry Tudor arrived with his huge entourage. All the people in the village were bustling with excitement over this momentous event. Anne is very worried, but the sister supports her. Anne was introduced to the King, and Mary he did not even notice. A sumptuous feast was given in the house, and Anne sat next to Henry. In the evening, the father reminded his daughter that tomorrow was an important day. She needed to make a good impression, everything depended on it. In the morning, Henry, Anne and their entourage went hunting. They were gone for a long time, and Thomas began to worry. It turned out that Anne had chased a deer to a dangerous ravine. Henry followed her, fell from the saddle, and was badly hurt. He now suffered the pain and anguish of wounded pride. Mary was entrusted to care for the king. He was surprised that he had not noticed such a beauty before. Before leaving, Henry asked that Mary and her husband not be delayed in arriving at the royal court. Anne was very angry with the sister, believing that she had taken away her hope for a better future. Later, Mary is informed by the father that she will become a queen's maid of honor and William will become a member of the Privy Council. Mary does not want this and begs her husband to refuse, but under the influence of the Duke of Norfolk, he did not make concessions to his wife. and also becomes a maid of honor. Mary asks her mother to prevent this, but she says it is not in their power to oppose his majesty's will. The sister is still angry with Mary, convinced that she was purposefully winning the king's attention. The Bolinge arrived at the royal court. The new ladies in waiting were introduced to Catherine of Aragon. She understood that her husband was interested in Mary, so she made it clear that the girl was not welcome here. Later, Mary met Jane Parker, who asked her not to hold a grudge against the queen. She has a good heart. She's just upset because of her husband's infidelities. In the evening a sumptuous ball was held at the palace. Jane Parker kept her eyes on George, who did not like her very much. William Stafford shared with Mary that life at the royal court was not for him. In the meantime, and wasted no time and continued to flirt with Henry Percy. The king came and whispered to Mary that he would be expecting her at his tonight. After the ball, a maid escorted Mary to the king's chambers. The girl was very embarrassed when Henry confessed that he liked her. He also confessed that Mary seemed to him to be a kind and honest person. They kissed and passion arose between them. In the morning Stafford took Mary to her father and uncle. The relatives asked the girl personal questions about her relationship with the king. The Duke of Norfolk was satisfied. He also believes that the queen will never give Henry a son, so if Mary gives birth to a boy, it will be the ultimate victory. Meanwhile, an escape from the palace to marry Henry Percy in secret. George told this to Mary, who was sure that when Henry Percy's family found out, Anne's reputation would be ruined. Henry was bound by a marriage contract with another woman, so the family would never allow this marriage to take place. For her sister's sake, 
Mary told her father everything. Thomas and the Duke of Norfolk decided that no one would ever know. Henry would marry his bride, as he should, and Anne would go to the French Queen's court until she wised up. Anne blames the sister for everything, not believing that she acted for her own good. The mother admonishes her eldest daughter, advising her to learn from the court ladies of France the tricks that allow any woman to get what she wants. Soon Mary felt ill. The king was happy when he found out she was pregnant. Now he would go out in public with Mary as if she were his wife. Besides, Thomas would now become a duke and George a viscount. They received wealth and property. George was not happy when he learned that the king had blessed his marriage to Jane Parker, but he had no choice. Elizabeth is not at all happy about their family's high position in society. In her opinion, all this patronage is too shaky. One day when Mary woke up, she felt pain. The court physician said that she had not lost the baby, but that she needed complete rest in order to keep the pregnancy alive. Now the king cannot share a bed with Mary, so the Duke of Norfolk looks for a new way to keep him by their side. Thomas believes it is time to bring him back from exile in France. The mother wrote a letter to her daughter, and Anne soon returned to England. Now at the royal court, and shone with her wit, drawing the admiration of courtiers and the king. Mary was very unhappy about her sister's return, believing that she would retaliate. Meanwhile, Jane Parker makes claims to George, because he does not perceive her as his wife. One day the king saw Anne talking to the courtiers. She had learned much from the Queen of France, who encourages scientists and philosophers. Henry enjoyed watching and pray. He had already lost all interest in Mary. Anne received a gift from the king, but she did not accept it, telling the servant to give it back. She did what? Sent it back, your grace. Henry was outraged to the core by this action. For the first time since her arrival, Anne visited the sister, making it clear that she would stop at nothing in her ambitions. In front of Mary, the servant brought in a gift from the king, which she again rejected. Henry was furious at the girl's constant refusals. He came to her and demanded an explanation. Anne declared that the gifts were insulting to her, because she allegedly cannot betray her sister. Mary went into labor, and Thomas and the Duke of Norfolk were very nervous. In front of them, the king asked Anne if he had a chance. While Mary gave birth to a boy, Henry vowed to Anne that he would never again share a bed with his wife and Mary, and told Henry that he had a chance. He did not even look at his newborn son and left. Anne felt triumphant, and Mary wept bitterly. The Duke of Norfolk was furious, for Anne had ruined their plan. However, Anne is convinced that the birth of the bastard means nothing. She wishes Mary and her child to return to Rochford. Elizabeth thinks that the eldest daughter should personally inform her sister. Anne did so. She also declared that she intended to become Queen of England and bear Henry an heir in lawful wedlock. In Anne's opinion, without power and position, love is worthless. Personal ambition must always come first. Mary was preparing to leave for the country while the king spent time with Anne. Catherine of Aragon watched from the window. In spite of everything, Anne was not satisfied with what Henry had done for her. She declared that there could be nothing between them as long as Catherine held the title of queen. Henry orders his courtiers to find a reason to get rid of his wife. Henry intends to send Catherine to a nunnery, but even this was not enough for Anne, for Catherine will still remain the king's lawful wedded wife. She wants to get him to dissolve his marriage to the queen and marry her. One day indignant Thomas bursts into Anne's chambers. It turned out that Henry Percy's fiancé had found out about his secret marriage to Anne and called off the engagement. This news reached the king, and now he does not want to see Anne and their entire family. The only person of the Boleyn family he trusts and whose reasoning he will believe is Mary. Mary arrived at the palace. Henry explicitly said that the court would test his legality of marriage to the queen. But before that happens, Henry wants to make sure that whoever he wants to replace her with is flawless. Despite her resentment toward her sister, Mary said that the king could trust him completely. Anne was very grateful to her sister. Mary said she did it as a sign of their reconciliation. The sisters decided to forget their feud. Mary agreed to Anne's request to stay with her at the palace. The trial was being prepared for Catherine of Aragon, who was accused of inappropriate acts in her first marriage. Despite the disgrace to which she was subjected, Catherine held her own with dignity. The Duke of Norfolk thinks it is a lost cause. Elizabeth is of the same opinion, for if Henry were to dissolve the marriage, he would go against the Catholic Church. It would cause a rift in the country. Catherine appeals to her husband's reasonableness, telling him that Anne is only manipulating him. Passion however has clouded his mind. Henry visited Anne and demanded from her what she had promised, for for her sake he had torn this country in half and been excommunicated. Anne still would not agree to perform her marital duty before marriage, then the king forced her to do so. Anne's ego was wounded, but she got her way. Her coronation ceremony took place. Anne is now Queen of England and the lawful wedded wife of Henry Tudor. A ball was held in honor of the new queen, 
but the courtiers do not like her at all and call her a witch. One day William Stafford came to Mary and told her he was leaving the palace. He had saved some money and asked the girl to marry him and run away together. But Mary could not agree to this, for by doing so she would bring shame on her family, and gave birth to a baby girl named Elizabeth. Of course, this disappointed the king, for he had hoped it would be a son. Soon and saw her husband through the window with a lady named Jane Seymour, and could not understand how the king could do this to her. Their scandal was heard throughout the palace, and tells her sister that she hit the husband. Her married life is falling apart. If she does not bear the king a son, her triumph is over. Soon and became pregnant again. The Duke of Norfolk had a delicate conversation with Jane Parker. If the queen does not give birth to a son this time, their whole family will be threatened. So it was in Jane's best interest to assist them. At night and woke up in pain. She lied to the servants that she was just having a nightmare, but in fact she had lost her baby. And told her brother and sister what had happened. Now if the king found out, he would declare the wife a witch, so and must become pregnant at any cost. She asked for help from George, who was horrified by the request. However the sister was very persistent. Mary could not believe it and hurried away. Jane saw her husband with Anne, and it shocked her. George couldn't do it after all. Meanwhile, Mary was about to return urgently to Rochford, and Jane came to the king to tell him what she had seen. In the morning, and confessed to Henry that she had lost their child. He called her a witch and ordered the guards to throw the queen into prison. George too was captured. Elizabeth slapped her husband and told the brother in tears that her children were doomed because of their ambition. Stafford arrived in Rochford to inform Mary of what had happened. Anne was put on trial, accused of a terrible crime against God and morality. The verdict was unanimous, and was found guilty. The guards led George to the scaffold. He began to pray, and it all happened quickly. Thomas witnessed it. Mary dared to meet the king and begged him to spare Anne. Henry was amazed at Mary's kindness and compassion and promised that he would have mercy on his wife. Mary visited her sister in the dungeon and told her that all would be well. Soon the queen was led to the scaffold, where she uttered her last word. She was sure she would be released, but at the last moment Mary received a note from the king. It turned out that Henry had changed his mind about giving his wife a pardon. With trembling hands Anne removed her crown, mantle, and family necklace. The sentence was carried out. That same day, Mary took little Elizabeth to return to Rochford with her. Next, we are told about the real characters in the story. Destitute Thomas passed away two years later. The Duke of Norfolk ended up in prison. Mary Boleyn married William Stafford and happily lived with him away from the palace for the rest of her life. Elizabeth was to become Queen of England and rule for 45 years.